This event is powerful for me because it brings together my last political written work and my new political photographic work. I've let some of you know that I'm not able to sign books today because of my hands and for other reasons it makes it hard for me to sign books. But I know it's hard to go up and ask somebody to sign a book. It's like being at a school dance and having to go across the gym and ask someone to risk a no. So I want you to know that instead of just saying no, I'm trying to think of all the ways that I can say yes. So I have a little silver point and shoot in my pocket. If you've got the book, let you hold it. I'll take a picture of both of us. I'll put it up on Flickr. You can add your name and metadata if you choose to. And I can't think of a more personalized book that you'll have afterwards. Much more than that. <laughs> These are hard times for simple celebration. In his novel set, on the eve of the capitalist revolution in France, novelist Charles Dickens succinctly and eloquently summed up the contradiction of danger and opportunity in the same historical moment. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. That's why this gathering is themed as a celebration of the interaction of love and struggle. I'm with you in that struggle. I'm proud to be living here in what is today referred to as Central New York, in Syracuse, which working people here call with pride a union town. I look forward to writing more about why. There's a long liberationist history in this region, from sovereign Haudenosaunee nations to the Underground Railroad. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, John Brown, Jocelyn Gage, Mary Walker, the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls. These were all our neighbors in struggle. According to the Preservation Association of Central New York, by the mid-1850s, slave catchers were clearly not welcome in Central New York, and Syracuse newspapers openly advertised support for the Underground Railroad. This is, it was abolitionist country what Milton Sernet calls North Star Country, where a multi-racial crowd of thousands helped a man of African descent free himself from the custody of federal agents, an action remembered as the Jerry Rescue. In describing the lessons of the rescue, the Reverend Scott Smith Taylor said, we don't have a moral foundation if we don't fight racism. As Transgender Remembrance Day approaches this fall, it offers us an opportunity as white anti-racist activists to take great care in how we use the word we in referring to victory in Syracuse. Letitia Green lost her life. Her loved ones are grieving. A young black man is behind bars. I express my solidarity with community organizers of all nationalities who are building unity. But in the politics of solidarity, context is everything. When white activists refer to the trial conviction of the young man who shot Letitia as a victory for us all, it strips away the acute conditions of racism in order to draw that equal sign. Until there is justice, there will be no peace. There is no justice without decent, good-paying union jobs, affordable housing and health care, food and transportation, education and recreation. There is no justice when dreams are still deferred. For white activists today, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King's 1967 speech one year before his assassination, are still an orienting lesson for not getting misdirected. Dr. King called the U.S. government, at that time unleashing a high-tech Pentagon war against the Vietnamese, quote, the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. When Dr. King was writing, Pentagon war was still an artificial stimulus for the capitalist economy. And today, economic suffering is widening and deepening because capitalist production, driven for profit, outstrips consumption. Poverty, because of abundance. 
the banks and the corporations are raiding the public treasury while demanding a blank check for war and military occupation. The contradiction is sharpening the class struggle and with it a historical battle of ideas generating new consciousness. In times of economic and social crisis, old ideas no longer circulate as good coin. New ideas gain currency. As the more revolutionary Lenin once observed, sometimes decades go by and nothing seems to happen, and then weeks go by and decades happen. Where are today's freedom fighters? <clears throat> Who will lead the way to liberation? I recall the succinct eloquence of the late black poet June Jordan. We are the ones we have been waiting for.